Okay, so it's Luxury Fred, and we are here in Riverside at the beautiful Mission Inn and Spa. My first time visiting this incredible place. We have a cool, uh, one of the hotel's presidential suites with this nice big corner balcony here. And uh, it's almost noon, so the hotel's famous clock is about to go off. As you can see, it's kind of like an enormous cuckoo clock with life-size figures down there that rotate. There's a California Native American in there. There's, I think that's Father Unipera Serra, who kind of discovered California, established the missions, and there's the 12 o'clock bell. So this is kind of the hotel's central courtyard and there's a restaurant down there. As you can see the building is made up of all kinds of different beautiful ornate styles. Some look like a castle, some look like a mission, some look like kind of a Spanish Moorish castle. It's beautiful, lots of things to look at. My first time here at the Mission Inn and Spa in Riverside, California. About an hour and 20 minutes from Los Angeles. And although my battery is on its last moment, just wanted to give you an idea of how cool this hotel looks. Now that's our suite over there in the corner. The uh, balcony. You can see the different architectural styles of the different wings of the hotel. Really cool, really beautiful. Including a, an Asian inspired section over there. And then down here is the courtyard and the chapel with uh, Tiffany stained glass windows there. But let's just do a quick walk and see if we can do this. So again, these are suites or rooms there, that side. That side we have the main section of the hotel. It's all city block. And then we come over here and we have this cool patio and kind of outdoor space for the suites that are over here. And this is big suite on the right here. You can see you got this outdoor area. Fountain. And then those are the windows of the suite that I'm in. Presidential suite. Or one of the presidential suites as they say. And that's the cloister wing over there, which goes from basically tying in to the mission wing by the Ramona Dome, all the way out to the other dome there, which is called the Carmel Dome. That's the 1910-1911. That's where my room is. I'm in is 402. It? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 402. Yeah. That's a great room. That's Aunt Alice's room. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like it. Oh, I go back. Blame it. 
Hopefully I won't see her. Yeah, well, no, you won't see her, but you'll have a nice little balcony that's right Yeah, that has this corner. view, the opposite yeah, view. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. You know, that's not the Annapolis. I'm sorry, that's not. It's across the way from the Annapolis. But that's a lovely little room. We show that at night on the, under the stars tours. But anyway, that, that's the cloister wing. The, uh, the room next to you, by the way, is where the uh, Moorish architectural columns and, and uh, uh, area is, is called the Alhambra Suite. That's where we think that uh, Nancy and Ronald Reagan honeymooned oh, wow. in 1952. It's where Richard Nixon, when he was senator, and Pat Nixon were staying when he received a telegram from General Eisenhower to be his running mate. Oh, wow. And, and the unfortunate part of the history for that room is where Robert Kennedy stayed before he was assassinated in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then anyway, from the Ramona Dome, basically, where you see the Gothic architecture, that's the third wing of the hotel called the Spanish Wing. It goes all the way across to where the clock is, and then takes a 90 degree turn and ties right back into the mission wing. That was done by three different architects. You can see the first three stories are a little bit different. Well, we can't see behind the Bougainvillea very well, but the fourth story there was a separate ar architect. And then the Gothic area up at the top, which is called Author's Row, is uh, done by his final architect, G. Stanley Wilson, who happened to be a Riversider, and he did the final uh, wing of the hotel. The clock itself, not the face, because the face is a reproduction of the original that we have in our museum uh, at the ground floor uh, where the foundation, the museum foundation where we usually start tours from, is, is in, from Nuremberg, Germany, uh, 1709. The clock still works. The clock face is about 25 years old. It's a replica of the original. Yeah. But beneath it was an addition where you see this is supposed to be Juan Batista de Anza, the uh, California explorer, or the explorer of California. Uh, anyway, it, it was the genius again of, in this case, it was of, of uh, Frank Miller's daughter, Alice. And she was kind of like, on, go ahead. No. No. Kind of on her deathbed. She had cancer and was dying, and she thought, I want to have something that every 15 minutes, and it rotates, so there's four quadrants, total of five figures on it, meaning it has to be more than one figure on one of the quadrants. So we have St. Francis of Assisi, Father Junipero Serra, Juan Batista de Anza, and then the final one is a Native American with a bow and arrow and a California bear. So it's the addition. It was about the mid-1950s when that was born. You notice that the... But anyway, so these stained glass windows were, were made for his church. Well, in 1919, the, the church was erected in 1906. In 1919, MetLife wanted to expand. And so what they did is they bought the church for the land. They had the church dismantled, demolished. Tiffany got his stained glass windows back into his studio. And Frank Miller arrives in 1921, 1922. And he knew Mr. Miller because he had stayed at the hotel during the 19-teens. 
and they negotiated. We don't know what was paid or anything else, but he acquired those. The very same year, 1921, 1922, he acquired this 16-foot uh, by 25-foot the tablo, Reredo's altar screen. It was uh, made for a wealthy silver baron in Mexico, outside of Mexico City, who, you know, had his own ch church. His own church, and this was what graced his, his church uh, interior. We think because of some of the one of the key individuals up there, you got the Trinity up here at the top. And if you come down here where this papal three bar cross is, is Pope Benedict XIII. And he reigned as Pope somewhere around 1730. So we think that that's probably when this was created. It's carved out of uh, Mexican cedar, overlaid with gold leaf. Uh, it comes in 32 pieces. And he paid about $5,000 for it, plus another thousand shipping, handling, and bribery, I think, to bring it in from Mexico to the United States. Right here is, is Joseph, uh, the earthly father of Jesus, with the baby Jesus. Down on this side of this uh, glass case is St. Joaquin, the uh, father of Mary. And on this side is St. Anne, the mother of Mary. Now, in the center, we believe, was the statue of Mary. This double bar cross here has nothing to do with the rain cross. This is an actual Roman Catholic bishop's cross. who's the Archbishop of Mexico City who was donated it here. We Beneath it is one of the larger and, and uh, most palatial of the suites of the hotel. It was at one time called the Bridal Suite, then we changed now to the Anne Rice Suite, because Anne Rice and, it, and a couple of her um, vampire series novels uh, stayed at the room and used it as a backdrop. In fact, I think uh, one of the characters in, in 